agreed to. Senator Waters. Uh, thank you, Chair. If I could just take this opportunity, given that uh, it was rather uh, rushed last night in the, in the five minutes that we had uh, to discuss this amendment, to just recap. Um, this amendment would allow landholders the right to say no to coal and coal seam gas on their land, uh, as many communities across the East Coast um, are now banding together to demand. Um, we saw today a poll released showing that 86 per cent of New South Welsh folk want the right to say no. They want to be able to lock the gate and not be breaking the law in doing so. Uh, and I want to also take this opportunity to acknowledge in the public gallery uh, some members of Lock the Gate Alliance um, who have been very courageous in the stand that they've taken against this industry, which of course, as we know, threatens uh, groundwater, threatens the climate and of course threatens the reef, as well as the existence of those uh, rural communities uh, and increasingly urban communities as coal seam gas encroaches into the cities as well. So I want to just uh, take the chance to say that we're honoured um, to be moving this amendment to give those communities the right to lock the gate and to do so lawfully. Um, as I outlined last night, this amendment doesn't change the ownership of the resource. It's perfectly constitutional and it doesn't lessen any of the other environmental requirements. So this is purely an amendment to strengthen the bargaining position of communities and allow them to lock the gate against this dangerous and risky industry. It's with great um, pleasure that I move this amendment. Thank you. The question is Senator Milne. Thank you, Chair. I rise to say how critical this amendment is, uh, particularly for, for the future of rural and regional Australia and particularly for areas that are growing our food into the future. It is disgraceful, Mr Chair, that um, permission has been given for coal seam gas exploration when the precautionary principle would have told you they have no idea what the impact on groundwater or the artesian basin is, and yet they have allowed this to proceed. Furthermore, they have no idea how much fugitive emissions of methane are going from those coal seam gas sites to atmosphere. I started my political career supporting the farmers at Wesley Vale against the North Broken Hill pulp mill, and I have been out with Senator Waters I've been out with Kate Fairman in New South Wales and Jeremy Buckingham, members of parliament there. I've been to the Felton Valley. I've been to Moree. I've been through uh, Lismore. I've been out onto the Liverpool Plains. And everywhere I go, farmers say to me they can't believe that they have been sold out so badly by both the Liberal and the National parties who've told them for years that they support them in what they do. And yet when push comes to shove, now, those parties are selling out to the coal industry and the coal seam gas industry against the best interests of protecting agricultural land and water into the future. Now, I've been on to some of those properties and it's very, very clear, particularly those black soils, uh, you'll get massive erosion if you allow the infrastructure for coal seam gas onto those properties. But apart from anything else, farmers and farming communities ought to have the right to say no. And the anger out there is extreme because the political process has said where the most votes are counts the most, and so they've changed the law to protect uh, communities where there are votes, like Western Sydney, but they have left rural communities high and dry. And I can tell you, Mr Chair, that people recognise, as Lester Brown has said many times, in this century where food security is a major challenge where the responsibility of those who can produce food need to do it in the face of extreme weather events particularly and in the face of lost agricultural land to urbanisation and other pressures, we must protect this land and we must give farmers the right to say no to coal seam gas and to coal on their properties. This is order, the era— Order. Senator Milne, please resume your seat. Senator Macdonald. Point of, point of order, Mr Deputy Chairman. This is an important debate. There is no one on the government benches listening to it, and so I draw your attention to the state of the chamber. Quor quorum is not present. Ring the bells. Nineteen. 
Sam, it's just a word of advice. You cannot leave the chamber once a quorum has been called. Quorum present, Senator Mill. Uh, thank you, Chair. As I was saying, in this century, Lester Brown has recognised that uh, that food is the new oil, and land and water are the new gold. And it's about time in Australia we recognise the pressure that the environment is under, and we protected our land and water and rural communities. So I think this is a critical, critical amendment to give farmers the right to say no. We have heard from the Leader of the Opposition, depending on which station he's being interviewed at the time, that sometimes he supports farmers' rights to say no and other times he doesn't. And it's about time we actually had this tested in the parliament. And this is going to be a very significant vote here as to whether people actually do want to support farmers being able to stand up. And when I was out on the Liverpool Plains, I met a gentleman who was 70 years old, Bill his name was. And he came down to talk to me and he said he'd spent his 70 years building up his property to the state that it's in now, a very beautiful property. And then he said he, did ne he never expected he'd have to spend the rest of his life defending it. Now that's a pretty powerful statement for a farmer to make. And he's got coal seam gas next door. Other communities like at Moree have locked the gate and good on them and communities around the country are trying to do the same. They are up against it because of the power of the fossil fuel lobby. And then when you look at what has happened in New South Wales, with ICAC in particular, and you find out how many of these permits have been granted and what the conditions of those were, you really have to scratch your head and ask why haven't they been revoked in the light of how they were granted in the first place. How is this possible, that farming communities are being wrought asunder and yet the people who have facilitated this are getting away with it. And as far as the government's concerned, it is very late for Tony Burke to be now the minister, to be now concerned about it after he has approved every coal seam gas project that has come across his desk up until now, including the Gloucester facility. And that's why the Greens have argued strongly that these laws should apply retrospectively, particularly to those projects that haven't actually been started. They should be applied retrospectively and they should be applied retrospectively to those that have started to the extent of them being forced to report on the water and atmospheric impacts of the fugitive emissions coming from those projects. There is no excuse when 80 per cent of the fossil fuel reserves should stay in the ground if we are to be serious about global warming and constrain global warming to less than two degrees. That means no more new fossil fuel industries. It makes no sense to be driving a fossil fuel industry at the end of the fossil fuel age. And you can't stand up in here day after day and say, oh, I believe the climate science, and in the next breath give the go-ahead to the biggest coal mines and massive coal casein gas facilities from one end of the country to the other. It makes no sense. It is totally hypocritical. You either believe the climate science and get on with rolling out 100 per cent renewables and protecting agricultural land and water, or you accept the fact that you're a climate sceptic, that you don't believe the climate science, and that's why you want to drive the fossil fuel industry. But you can't have it both ways, and it's about time people started to face up to that. We're seeing the destruction of the Great Barrier Reef as I stand here as a result of new coal ports 
We've got the government and the coalition driving the opening up of coal in the Galilee Basin and the Bowen Basin. The Galilee Basin alone, if it was a separate country, would be producing 7 per cent of the world's emissions if it were a separate country when, those emissions, when that coal is burnt. It has to stay in the ground. It is not only a bad thing for the atmosphere, but it's a bad thing for uh, economic development. And so uh, we, uh, we can't have people investing in, uh, in companies when we know that the share value is going to be written off because they're, based, they're valued on their reserves and their reserves are not accessible if you're serious about the climate science. So let's get back and let's protect our farmers. Let's give them the right to say no.